Hi. Someone I know was recently complaining that no graphics programs have plain old simple line tools in them anymore. Well, I don't know about all the others, but Photoshop still has one, even if it's not terribly obvious. You'll find it among the shape tools. Right down here with the rectangle, the rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygon, and custom shape tools. You can choose it from this flyout menu by just choosing line tool. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut, which is U, and hold down the shift key and keep typing U, which cycles through the tools until you get to the line tool. Or you can choose one of the shape tools and then choose the line tool from the bar up here at the top in the options, control, bar, whatever you want to call this thing. Once you have it, of course, you can choose to make a shape layer, to make a path, or to just fill the shape with pixels as soon as you finish drawing it. And we're going to choose that one for now. Like all of the other tools, it has various options that you get only when you click on it. And like all of the rest of the shape tools, you have to set the various options before you start to drag out the shape. You can't change them on the fly, nor can you change them after the shape has been drawn, although you can edit points if you make a path or shape layer, and we'll get to that later. So with the line tool, the first thing that you'll notice is the weight. And this is the thickness of the line, and you can put in anything you want to here. Um, right now it's set to one point. We can set it to four pixels by typing in four, and then PX for pixels. And now we'll have a four pixel line. To make the line itself, you just click to start the beginning point, and then drag out the line. And you can drag it in any direction you want and as far as you want. If you'd like it to either be horizontal, vertical, or 45 degrees, just hold down the shift key to constrain it. And then you can constrain it to those angles. Otherwise, just drag it out as far as you want. And when you have it the way you like it, let go and there's your line, just like that. It's that easy. You can also add arrowheads by using the reveal triangle that's just to the right of all of these tools. If you click the start, then you get an arrowhead at the beginning of the line. And if you click end, then you'll get an arrowhead at the end of the line, as you would expect. And if you click them both, then you get a double-headed arrow. You can change the size of the arrowhead and the shape um, within limits by changing the width, length, or concavity in the text fields here. The width and length are percentages of the line weight. So right now we have a four pixel line. If I wanted the arrowhead to be exactly 24 pixels from this point to that point, I can't type in 24, but I can type in 600% and that will give me a 24 pixel arrowhead from that point to that point. The same way with the length. I can't type in a pixel value, but I can drag here over the length, which gives me that little um, finger with the arrows underneath it so that I can change the length. But if I wanted a length that was, oh, let's make it easy, um, we'll do a 40 pixels. All I'd have to do is type in a thousand for a thousand percent and that will give me an arrowhead that's 40 pixels from the tip here to the base right there. I can also change the concavity which gives the arrowhead some personality. You can go from 50% to minus 50%, and that percentage is the length of the arrowhead itself. So 50%, of course, is halfway. And what changes is these two points that are right next to the line. Positive values drag those points toward the tip of the arrow, and negative values drag them away from the tip, so you wind up with something that looks more like a spearhead. So let's put in 30%, because I happen to like the way this one looks, and that will give you an arrowhead that looks like this. If I put in minus 30%, then as I said, I get one that's more like spear points, more like that. So that's how you can change the arrowheads themselves. Now, all of these things work together to give you the kind of arrowheads that you want. And you need to make sure that you've got room for all of your arrowheads, because if you put really wide lines in here, like let's go for a quarter of an inch, 0.25 inches, and let's hide this layer and make another one. That will give me huge arrowheads, and I may not have room for all of that. If you don't have room for an arrowhead, then you get something like that when you drag it out. Which, um, you know, these are really interesting shapes, and you might actually like that kind of thing, and uh, this might be what you're going for, but if you're not, then you have to be careful that you have room, so just do a little addition, make sure you've got room for your arrowheads and the length of the um, shaft that you want. If you want to have a curved arrow, then you're better off making the shape layer or the path, because then you can move the points around and get what you want. So let's make a shape layer here, and let's go back to um, 
an arrowhead just at the start, and we'll need to change this back to... Oh, let's go back to the four pixels. That looked pretty good. And then I can drag out my arrow, like that, and get the white arrow tool, which is the direct selection tool. Um, you can see that there. Because, of course, now I'm working on a vector mask with a color layer, and if you want to know more about vector masks, I've done a whole tutorial about them, and you can look at that later. But right now you can grab these two points and move them up here. And because I'm working in CS5, I have spring-loaded tools. You do in CS4 or better. So I can touch the P key, and as long as I'm holding it down, I'll get the pen tool. When I let go, I'll go back to the direct selection tool. If you're working in an earlier version of Photoshop, you can just tap the P to get the pen tool, and you'll just keep it and have to type the A to get the arrow tool later. But if you've got the pen tool and you hover over a line, you'll get a little pen tool with a plus next to it, which lets you know that you're about to add a point. So just click to add the point. And if you stay over that point, you'll get a minus, which means you can make it go away again. So you have to be a little bit careful. Make sure you've got pluses. And then you can add two points and select those points and drag them down and make a nice curved arrow there. You can also directly change the points here on the arrowhead itself, and you can drag them around to give your arrow a different shape. If I select both of them and hold down Command-T or Control-T on a PC to go into free transform mode, I can move both of them at once, and I can get angles on the tips of my arrowhead here that are way more than the 50% that I would otherwise be allowed. Typing Enter to accept that change, and I'm just going to click on the vector mask here so that you can see just the arrow by itself. And as you can see, you can get just about any kind of arrow that you want here with just a little bit of work. And that's about all there is to this simple but very effective tool. Till next time, this has been Robin Wood, and I hope you found this helpful.